Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and today I want to address an issue or question that I've seen popping up recently and I think it's older than that. People probably have been asking that since the beginning of time and since the dinosaurs roamed the earth but it's concerning uh, flats and how focus influences them and whether you need to be at the exact same focus point that you were at when you were imaging for your flats to be uh, valid. And um, the answer to that is no, no you don't. It's fine to have some uh, small focuser, uh, focus uh, offset uh, between your lights and your flats. And so that's the end of the video. Please subscribe, please like, please comment. No, okay, let me go a bit into more details. So let's just clarify a little bit like how this works. Basically we have uh, of course the light that comes into your telescope gets refracted or reflected all over the place and it reaches your camera. And you need to adjust, in, for, for my telescope model or for refractors, you just need to adjust the distance that the camera sensor is from the imaging lens for a refractor, the front element lens, or for this one from the primary mirror. You want to just adjust the distance of the sensor to the primary mirror to adjust focus depending on your distance to the object. Some other factors that will influence focus is your filters, uh, but also um, temperature. Because temperature can make like that little tube here um, contract or expand depending on the temperature differences and filters as well the glass of the filter so there's a filter for example this black thing here is a filter wheel a filter is just a piece of glass that's usually colored and it will let you it, it will let through for example the color red and if it's a piece of glass glass it has a certain thickness and that thickness actually affects your focus a little bit and uh, typically like so if I have a filter that's three millimeters um, thick it will affect my the, the point of my focus by roughly one millimeter or so something like that so you know there are tons of little considerations and if you're using a, a Schmidt Cassegrain you won't be moving the the distance of the camera to the primary mirror by moving the camera itself you'll be moving the primary mirror itself so you'll, you're actually using the focus knob what the focus knob is doing is it's moving the primary mirror so that's at the back of your telescope to adjust the distance uh, between your camera sensor and the primary mirror of your Schmidt Cassegrain it actually gets a bit more complicated than that because the secondary mirror has uh, a magnification effect on the uh, actual or uh, the apparent focal length of your Schmidt Cassegrain but let's not get too much mired into uh, the details so we know that because of temperature changes or because of filter changes the point of best focus will change a little bit by a couple of millimeters here and there um, and that means that okay you take uh, you do a whole imaging night and you want you have a monochrome sensor you've been capturing uh, luminance red green and blue data through multiple filters there's been temperature changes throughout the night and so that means that um, your focus has shifted throughout the night and you've autofocused automatically uh, using some imaging software like Nina, Sequence Generator Pro, um, Voyager, Maxim DL, APT, all of those uh, software that are available to control everything including the, uh, the focus points and uh, then comes the morning or maybe you, you've done that in the evening prior to the imaging session or maybe you've done it a month ago but you'll want to take what is called flat frames and flat frames they're basically frames that represent the um, any optical defects that you have in your imaging train so whether it is uh, something called vignetting or vignetting, I don't know how to pronounce it Some, uh, someone who in the comment actually made me doubt myself and um, also you can have like uh, and vignetting is a darkening of the corners of your image for example um, you also have uh, dust that can be on the filters that can be on the sensor window and any dust will will basically create a shadow on the main sensor okay so that's uh, that's fair enough and uh, the flats will basically help correct for those optical defects including the dust modes and the question becomes is uh, to take the flats you actually use 
uh, a light source, a homo homogeneous light source. So some people, they stretch a t-shirt on top of the aperture and they point the telescope to some, to the sky, for example, or to a, a, a wall that is uh, uniformly lit and that kind of stuff. And then you, the, basically your flats will just take as input a, a white surface that's not too bright. And as output, it will give you uh, the optical defects of your imaging train. And are those opti optical defects affected by the, f the, the placement of your camera sensor relative to your front objective lens or to your primary mirror? Uh, the answer is not really, not much at least, and not at all for uh, this kind of telescope. I mean, I'm sure there are extreme s situations where the, um, uh, the, the placement of the sensor um, compared to the primary mirror would actually start affecting uh, vignetting, for example. But let's think of it li logically. What determines vignetting and what determines the size, the apparent size of the shadow of a dust moat that was, let's say, on one of my filters on your sensor? Well, for uh, the dust moat, it's determined by the size, side, size of the actual dust spot on your filter. It's also dis determined by the uh, distance between your filter and your camera sensor. And it's determined by the angle of the light, the maximum angle of the light. And that maximum angle of the light, it's uniquely determined by what is called a, a focal ratio. You basically, you can take half your aperture, divide it by your focal length, and that will be uh, the tangent of your light incidence, if you remember some high school trigonometry. And it's fine if you don't. <laughs> uh, but basically, okay, so we have three factors. And vignetting will also, is actually, especially optical, not mechanical vignetting, like when you have any obstacle that comes into the light path, the sharper the angle of the light that comes in, the, the more probable something in the light path here will, will basically cut off that light cone that is going towards your uh, sensor. And okay, so that means that uh, the vignetting will be affected by the focal ratio because it's uh, the focal ratio directly measures the incidence angle of light. And uh, this focal ratio will also affect the uh, appearance, the, the, the apparent size of the shadow of dust motes on your sensor. Does that focal ratio change when you change the focus point? For this telescope, it doesn't. For Newtonian telescopes in general, it doesn't. For um, refracting telescopes in general, it doesn't. For schmidt cassegrain telescopes, it does. Wait, it does? Yes, it does. Because for schmidt cassegrain telescopes, you're actually moving the primary mirror typically when you're focusing, which means that when you're moving the primary mirror, you're changing the distance between the primary mirror at the, the back of your uh, schmidt cassegrain telescope and the secondary mirror of your schmidt cassegrain telescope. And for every millimeter uh, that you change your primary mirror, um, distance to the secondary mirror, you will be actually changing the focal uh, plane, so where your camera sensor should be to be in focus, by uh, about 3.1 millimeters. I haven't computed that myself. I'm uh, using that from a post from someone I respect on Cloudy Nights, a forum de dedicated to astronomy and astrophotography. So that means that if your focal length changes because the, the uh, the placement of your camera sensor will depend on the focal length. Um, if your focal length changes when you're focusing, well, that means that your focal ratio also changes. And that also means that the light incidence angle also changes, which means that in theory, the shadow of the dust motes could grow larger or smaller when you focus with a schmidt cassegrain type of telescope. Uh, it also means that vignetting could be affected, actually at, at least mechan mechanical type of vignetting. For example, if you have a, what is called an off-axis guider, which basically introduces a small prism or a small mirror in the light path, uh, but hopefully without affecting the sensor on your camera. Um, but even then, the difference 
is minimal. So if you were to actually compute a change in the distance between your camera sensor and the secondary mirror for a schmidt cassegrain telescope of 5 mm, uh, I computed the incidence angle would change uh, by 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 degrees. Uh, for a, a specific Schmidt Cassegrain that I had in mind. This has literally zero impact on your flats. It has zero impact on the shadows of your dust motes. It has zero impact on the vignetting. The only impact that I, you could have is if you have an off-axis guider, for example, whose prism is already almost at the limit of your sensor. But you probably wouldn't have that because then that off-axis guider would already cause uh, probably um, some light streaks on your star shapes or a spike on your stars, which you would try to be removing anyway. Uh, which means that even for telescopes where the focal ratio changes when you're focusing, and therefore for whom the flats are in theory affected, they're not. So if you're in the vicinity of best focus at infinity, and you will always be in that vicinity because five millimeters is actually a huge distance uh, in terms of autofocus distance changes, then you're fine. You can you know, take your flats and be done with it and not think about it. You don't need to think about focus when you're taking your flats. And which means that if you are never changing your equipment, so if you, ch you keep your imaging train as it is all the time, even if uh, the season has changed from winter to summer, the difference in the actual focus um, will not be enough to affect your flats. So you could be taking one set of flats in winter and using that same set of flat for months and months, including in summer, including across multiple filters, uh, without any issue. And this is what I've personally been doing. And I've been doing that, of course, for this telescope. I've been doing that for refractors. And I've been doing that with schmidt cassegrain telescopes as well and there have never been any issues. Um, so that's the summary. That's the, let's say, the too long didn't read version came at the start. No, you don't need to care about your focus uh, when you're taking flats. The long answer is you don't have to care about the, uh, the focus for taking your flats, but for some types of telescopes where the primary mirror is moved, uh, in theory, there is some effects. And especially if you take a schmidt cassegrain if you were to completely change the focus, so like you were focused at infinity to take pictures of stars, and then suddenly you're st you're, you, um, you decided that you wanted to do collimation of your telescope using a terrestrial object uh, that, that's reflecting light or something like that, that's very close. So you completely turn the, the focus knob like 20 times on your schmidt cassegrain to achieve that new focus, then yes, in that case, maybe, indeed your flats would be affected. So you want to be in the same ballpark uh, for a schmidt cassegrain type of telescope. But even then, there is a lot of tolerance for a uh, focus shift for your flat frames. So in other words, don't worry, be lazy, be happy, don't fret, take your flats. If you're roughly at the same focus point as you were during your imaging nights, even if you're off by a few millimeters, which is a huge amount in terms of uh, focusing, you'll be fine. If you're always um, disassembling your equipment and your imaging train, so you need to retake flat frames every time, I would recommend just like drawing on the focuser tu tube or having some kind of way to mark where your focus at infinity is so that uh, if you've racked in your focuser and you're a bit like uncertain uh, that your flats will be okay. You'll just rack it out back to where you have your mark so that you'll be fine to take your flats. But even then, you know, don't, don't worry too much about it. If your flats do not calibrate your lights properly, it's typically not because it's of focus. There's probably other reasons uh, that could be linked to the camera. It could be linked to the way you're taking your flats, but it's usually not the focus. And darn it, this video has really dragged much longer than I expected it would. Sorry, I got a bit into the weeds. Still, I hope it was interesting. I, I hope it was useful. Uh, if you did find it useful, please click on the like button, like button below. You can also leave a comment uh, down below if you have questions, remarks, or if I was completely wrong, uh, then I would <laughs> issue a correction video, of course, based on your feedback. And also, 
if uh, this is your first time on the channel or you know you haven't yet subscribed to my channel please feel free to go down subscribe and click the little notification bell I try to publish fairly often um, and I try to keep like good interesting content on a surf photography so by doing that you make sure that you're not missing out on that and you're also helping me um, with the channel in the long term so thank you so much for watching this uh, I hope it was useful uh, as always, whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.